This box is a doorway into a lot of bookish greatness. Maybe if I rub it on my face, I'll become just as great as what's inside. Probably shouldn't kiss this. I love boxes, specifically boxes that have books inside of them. Today, I'm bringing you a bookish unboxing. I recently applied to be a rep for the Illumicrate box, and guess who got approved? It me! So basically what that means is that they hook me up with their box every month. Just a box. So this is the box, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you- just kidding. Um, it's a bookish box, so obviously there's bookish goodness inside of it. I've always been really hesitant about book subscription boxes because I feel like a lot of times they just have a lot of clutter in them. And listen, I don't need that in my life. My life is already cluttered with books. Books. Not that that's a bad thing. I love that book clutter. I much prefer book clutter over all other types of clutter. But I've ordered Illumicrate boxes several times in the past and every time I've been overly impressed with the things that they have in their box. It's full of aesthetic bookish clutter and that I'm okay with. And they pretty much always blow me away with the beautiful edition of books that they have in their boxes. Like the special editions that they do just like stab me in the eyeballs with how cool they are. That was such a bad way of putting that, but like, it's kind of true, okay? They stabbed me in the eyeballs in a good way. Anyway, <laughs> I'll show you a few that they've done in the past that stabbed me in the eyeballs. The first box I ever got had this beautiful edition of Vengeful, and it had me shook when I saw it. I just love this edition so much, and they actually came out with a version of Vicious that had a very similar cover to this one, and I missed out on the sale for that one. I'm still sad about it. I don't want to talk about it. I'm real upset, but it's okay. We move on in life. Even if we don't have that beautiful edition of that book that we don't really need, just keep on going. It's gonna be okay. We'll survive. Then recently they did this edition of The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. The simplicity of this one is just V nice. Ooh, I just used V instead of very. We're not on Twitter, Jesse. We can't use V instead of very. That's illegal. Then they did this amazing Cruel Prince cover recently. I feel like the person who designed this was definitely a Slytherin because everything about this just feels Slytherin. Then finally they had these Cruel Prince dust jackets that you could put on your books. The flavor of these though, they're just so freaking good. So the box that I'm unboxing today is actually the December box and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be doing unboxing videos for you guys once I get these boxes from now on up until I'm no longer a rep. Which if they want to re-sign me as a rep I'd love that. I'll do year-long unboxings for them. Ah, please. But really though I'll be sad once I'm no longer a rep because I love these boxes so much. They're just jam-packed with such great stuff. I'll be sure to leave the Illumicrate box website down below in the description if you want to check them out. But without further ado it's time to get unboxing. So so let's get it. This month's theme is secrets and schemes. I like secrets and schemes, so this box is just for me. Where do I even begin? Which secret do I start with? Which scheme should I start with? I'm gonna go with the pins in here. We've got Star Wars enamel pin set, which I know this doesn't really have anything to do with books, which I guess it kind of does. There are Star Wars books out there, so it works, but this is kind of also a fandom-y box, so sometimes you'll get fandom-y things. Now, I have to admit something embarrassing. I mean, it's not really that embarrassing, and I feel like I've talked about it on my channel before, but like, your boy has it seen Star Wars yet. I mean, I tried watching Star Wars Episode 4, A Brand New Hope, and I fell asleep during it. I'm sorry. I feel like I fell asleep within like the first 30 minutes, which is like really embarrassing. I just full on ended up attending a snooze festival, and I awoke to the credits rolling on by. Not my proudest moment in life, I will admit. And I'm honestly not proud of the fact that I haven't watched them yet. Like, I don't think it's like this quirky, cool thing that I haven't watched them. Like, ooh, I'm so edgy. Like, no. I'm missing out on a big chunk of pop culture. And people talk about Star Wars all the time as if they have a college degree on it. And I sit there and I listen and I'm always confused as heck because I know nothing. I'm in the dark, lost in space, unable to land. That's actually one of my biggest fears. So we're gonna stop talking about that. I have made it my goal to watch all of the Star Wars films this year. I'm not super hopeful that I'll end up making it through, but who knows? Maybe wearing these pins while I watch them will bring on a brand new hope and I'll blaze on through them. God, I'm annoying. Time for the next item. I'm gonna go with this candle. This says four Four paths. Why does that sound so familiar? Four paths. Four paths. Four paths. I'm gonna cheat and look it up in the booklet. Ah, uh, this is from The Devouring Grey. I actually started that book this past summer and I didn't make my way through it because I was like, this just doesn't feel like the right time to read this book. Like, I was saving that book for October, but then guess what happened? October came around and guess who did not read The Devouring Grey? That would be me. I did not do it. I suck. I feel like I tell this same story with every unread book on my bookshelf ever. It just wasn't the right time, guys. Maybe, just maybe though, it was the 
of book gods being like, you need to wait for this devouring gray candle so you can pop it open, light it up, and smell it. Ooh, that smells really good. Anyways, and smell it as you're reading the devouring gray. So you can sniff sniff while you read read. Mmm, mm, that smells really good. I'm not really good at describing smells, but it smells like four paths, apparently. I don't know what four paths smells like, but I guess it smells like this. I wish you guys could smell it too. It smells kind of like foresty, I guess? Like artificial forest. Does that make sense? I feel like it makes sense. There is a smell that's like an artificial forest smell, and that's the sniff I'm getting from this. I'm excited to light this up and read The Devouring Grey in October. I'm gonna have to save this for October. Next item, this thing. Oh, it's a patch. That's pretty cool. What book is this from? Um, The Night Circus? It's giving me like circus vibes. Let's see what the booklet says. Ah, Caraval. I was close. I mean, those books are pretty similar. This definitely does bring on the Caraval vibes. We've got that top hat that for whatever reason just screams and shouts carnival or circus. We've got that L, which I guess stands for legend. It's quite nice. Maybe I'll just patch it onto this shirt. I read the first Caraval book when it came out and I really enjoyed it, but did I ever continue on with the trilogy? Do you know whose video you're watching? The boy who hardly ever finishes book trilogies or series. I'm working on getting better at it, okay? It's a new year, new me, getting better at series. I think. I hope. I just am bad at carrying on with things. It's a part of my brand at this point. I don't like it though. I'm working it out of my brand. Have any of you guys read the second or third one? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments if you had. I really enjoyed the first one. It was like whimsical vomit. That's the best way I can sum it up. It had an eccentric atmosphere, flowery writing, and a solid mystery element. The next item I'm gonna go with is this right here, the one that I have been avoiding because I feel like I am going to love this, which is why I have been avoiding it. I'm not the type to eat dessert before my meal. I gotta work before I get that sugary goodness, which I guess technically the book in here is gonna be the dessert, but like, whatever. Let's dive into this pre-dessert. <laughs> it's what I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> it's a mug. Ooh, and it's got the poppity poppers on it. Ooh, okay. I know what book this is. Wait, is this the Cruel Prince? No, 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 no. It's Akatar. Akatar. We're going with Akatar. Yes, it is Akatar themed. I got it right. Which yet again, with that series, I find myself in the hole of. Yikes, I haven't finished that series yet. Even though technically that series is being extended, so oh, loophole book bros. But yeah, I've only read the first book. I need to hop on that horse again and get going with it. I really have no excuse either. I could sit here and make excuse after excuse after excuse. It's never the right time. I want the hype to die down. I'm just not in the mood for a romance heavy book. But at the end of the day, I'm the one holding myself back from that series. Isn't that such a hard thing to think about? How we're the only ones holding ourselves back in life? Yeah, I hate thinking about that. So we're gonna move on. Next up, we've got this, which I don't know what it is. Oh, it's a 2020 calendar. I can read. At least I hope I can since I have a channel dedicated to reading. Let's flip on through it. I love this already. It's got different bookish things each month, which I mean, I expect that going into this. It is a bookish box. So of course it's gonna be bookish, but for the month of January, it's got one choice can transform you February has the winner's curse March has a quote from the legend series It says each day means everything's possible again And that's all I'm gonna show you guys because I personally don't like spoiling myself for calendars I know that that sounds so dumb But I don't like looking at all the pictures before they show up because what's the fun in that? I mean if you do that, I'm not judging you It's just like a personal thing like I don't want to spoil all the beautiful artwork that's to come each month You know what I'm saying? saying. There's one more thing in here before the book and that is this. It's a Kaz Brecker coin. I believe it's Kaz Brecker. It just says that it's featuring the ultimate schemer of schemes. It's Kaz Brecker. I'll admit that the first time I got one of these coins from one of these boxes, I was like, what the heck am I going to do with that? But then I turned it around and it's got a magnet on it so I can just bam, put that on my fridge. That way I can see Kaz Brecker every day and feel inspired to go on a heist or something or be extra brutal. Yeah, I can never be as brutal as Kaz Brecker, but, but it can just be a reminder of how how much I love the Six of Crows duology. Okay, it's time for the book that's in the box. I've already kind of been spoiled because like I can see it right now through the bag, which can I just say that the bags that they put these books in are just top notch. Like I love this. I can use bags like this to carry my books around and prevent them from being damaged. So bless you Illumicrate for these bags you provide. The book in the box is... Blood air! Ooh, 
whoa, whoa, ho, ho, ho. Okay, when I first saw it, I will admit I was like, okay, they didn't do anything special with this book. But then this caught my eyeball. Freaking what the frick? Look at those edges. Look at them. It's freaking blood. Blood. This is actually so cool. It's like such a fresh take on the normal sprayed edges. Inside it, we have a letter from the author and it's also signed by the author. Ooh, look at these end pages though. Those are super nice. We love that. Or at least I love that. This is also the UK cover of the book, which I much prefer this over the US edition. Like I love this one so much more. So I'm glad I got this edition. This book actually got quite a bit of controversy last year. There were bits in this book that people found harmful. So the author decided to push back the release, fix up a few things, and then release it into the world at a later date, which I'm sure was not an easy thing to decide to do. I actually read this book already. It was one of the last books that I read last year and I really enjoyed it. I gave it like a solid three stars. The book is a take on Anastasia. It takes place in a world where there are people who have affinities, which are essentially just kind of different powers that people have. And we follow our main character, Anna, who has a blood affinity, which means that she can control people's blood. Her father was an emperor, but he was murdered and she's being blamed for his murder. But she's like, no, I did not kill my father. And she's not about to let them put the blame on her for his murder. So she sets out on this mission to clear her name. So that was everything that was in this box. Again, I am very impressed with this box. It's hard to say what my favorite things are, but I feel like one of them is just the sprayed edges on this. Like, I love that. I am obsessed with that. And I think also the Akatar mug. Like, this is just super dope. And if you've been following this channel for a while, then you know that I have a bookish mug collection. So I'm going to be adding this to my bookish mug collection. But that's all that I have for you guys. That's the unboxing. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. You guys should let me know down below in the comments if you have read The Blood Air and your thoughts on it. Or let me know down below in the comments if you subscribe to a bookish subscription box and what that box is. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye. Oh.